Apple's original AirPods were widely mocked when they were first announced three years ago. However, they quickly caught on as one of Apple's fastest selling products ever and were praised for their effortless pairing process, respectable battery life, ease of use, and wireless design. Now Apple's newly announced AirPods 2 add some benefits on top of an already great product, including the H1 chip, Hey S-Word support, longer battery life when using talk time, a wireless charging case, lower latency, and faster connection times when switching between multiple devices. But should you buy them or maybe wait for something better? Okay, so before we get into it, let's start with the design of this product. Now the design of AirPods 2 are pretty much identical to the original. Original. Starting with the case, it looks pretty much the same, however there are some subtle differences. The finish of the top case matches more closely with the bottom part than the original AirPods did. The hinge on the AirPods 2 case also appears to have a brushed aluminum that isn't as shiny as the first generation. Also on the back of the AirPods 2 case, the button for pairing the device has been moved slightly up from its original position. The only real big functional change is that the AirPods 2 comes with an optional wireless charging case which you can purchase with the AirPods for $200 or purchase separately on your own for your old AirPods 1 for $80. The wireless charging AirPods case also has a light on the outside of it so when you place it down on a Qi charger, you can see if it's charging. If you want to forget the wireless case completely, you can also get a pair of second generation AirPods for $169. Now as for the function of the wireless charging case, it will pretty much work with any wireless charger out there, except for some of the vertical wireless chargers, which places the Qi charger higher up than the AirPods can reach. The functionality of the wireless charging actually works pretty great. I haven't actually plugged in a lightning cable into my AirPods since I've gotten them. I've only charged them via the wireless Qi charger that's next to my bed and it works fine. Now, my biggest problem with the wireless AirPods case is now the fact that air power is canceled. And one of the biggest benefits to this wireless charging case and almost its entire reason for existing was so that you could buy that air power charging mat and then have a very simple solution to charge your phone, Apple Watch, and AirPods. And without that product being with the wireless charging case, it almost seems like these really don't have as much of a reason for existing unless you're really heavily invested into Qi wireless chargers already and then you can place your AirPods down on them. However, if you just have a wireless charger for your phone, you're still going to have to charge those devices separately or charge them one at a time. As for me, I already have a bunch of Qi wireless chargers everywhere and sometimes you can find them in places like a cafe, mainly Starbucks, where they wouldn't have so ports available so for me I find that it's actually worth the added benefit and honestly there are some rumors that reverse wireless charging will be coming to the next generation of iPhones so you can place the AirPods on the back of your iPhone and charge them so if you kind of want to future proof your AirPods in the promise of a feature like that that's also another reason to spend that $40 up front. Now the AirPods themselves haven't changed in any noticeable way on the outside. They look exactly the same as the first generation. And just like the first generation, the pairing process is dead simple. Just open up the AirPods case right next to your iPhone and you will see the info screen pop up for your AirPods case and all you do is tap connect and your AirPods are ready to be used. It's this kind of ease of use that made AirPods so popular to begin with. Now, once you're done pairing them, it's the same exact AirPods experience that you're used to. Now, one of the lingering questions is, does AirPods 2 sound any better than the first generation? In fact, in my previous video, I even said that when I first took them out of the box, when I first put them in my ear for a listening test, I thought that they sounded better than the first generation, but I also conceded that maybe that's because my AirPods 1 were in use for quite a while. The battery had degraded on them a lot and other things like maybe earwax inside of the AirPods might have impacted performance or maybe me running in the rain or maybe some unseen water damage somehow affecting the sound quality of the original AirPods could make the slightest bit of difference. Now I've done a lot of research and listened to a lot of opinions from other people to see if they sound any better. I even ran a poll on this channel and the vast majority of people said they did not sound any better than the originals, although there are still some people out there who claim that 
the sound is different than the first generation. Now, as for my conclusion, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they don't sound any better, even though I thought they initially did sound better. Even if they did sound better, the difference between AirPods 1 and AirPods 2 is so slight that I'm constantly questioning myself. So even if there is a slightly better sound to them, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much the same exact sound profile that you're used to with the first generation. So don't buy AirPods 2 thinking that you're going to get upgraded sound. And yes, if you've listened to AirPods 1 in the past, you know they aren't the best wireless sounding earbuds on the market, but I think they sound plenty fine for casual music listening or podcasts. And some people don't like the open design of AirPods. So if you're wearing them outside and you're walking around, you can probably hear a lot of street noise and stuff. But I actually prefer that for outside use. So if I'm running around outside with AirPods on, I can still hear the ambient environment around me to let me know if something like a car is approaching. On the AirPods themselves, there's still no physical controls to control something like raising the volume However, you can go into the Bluetooth setting on your phone to give you some options to customize the accelerometer in your AirPod. In that Bluetooth setting, you can change the AirPod controls to play, pause, next track, previous track, turn them off completely, or you can change them to Siri. Now, the great thing with AirPods 2 is that they have Hey S Word support built right in. So you actually don't need to change that tapping of the AirPods to the Siri support. And when I first heard of AirPods getting Hey S Word support, I was kind of skeptical and I didn't think it was going to be a good addition to the AirPods. But after using the AirPods for this long, I think that Hey S word is the killer feature on this next generation of AirPods. Number one, the Siri voice is much more pleasant than the original. When you used to activate it on the original AirPods, it would drop to a lower quality Siri voice and it would kind of be grating in your ears to the point where you didn't even want to activate it. I also find myself using the Siri virtual assistant more in public because when I'm in public, I can say the Hey S word support and for people looking at me, they might just think I'm talking to someone on the phone, but inside of my ears, I'm getting constant feedback of the Siri virtual assistant. So I can say, how's the weather? Or I can ask it to play a song, skip a track, raise the volume, lower the volume, or even ask it for directions in maps and then get turn by turn directions right into my ear without having to bother anyone else on the street. I also found it really useful for around the house. Say I was cooking something and preparing something and I had my hands full, I could then activate Siri to play songs or even respond to someone in a text message or when I found it really, really useful was when I was using it with my Apple Watch during workouts. So if you're running outside or say if you even have weights in your hand, you still have full control of things like music playback. And I found all of this very extremely helpful to a point of where I didn't even think I wanted this feature to where I don't wanna live without it. It feels like having a virtual assistant always at your command and always in your ear. It really does feel like the future. As for battery life, it's pretty much the same as the first generation of AirPods. So five hours of listening time and then 24 hours of charge in the AirPods case. However, where it does change in battery life is during talk time thanks to the H1 chip, which gets you about double the talk time from 1.5 hours all the way up to three hours of talk time. And I personally talk to people a lot on the phone using my AirPods. I find it a lot more comfortable than holding my phone up to my ear. And having that increased talk time means that before with AirPods 1, I would generally have one AirPod in my ear. And then as the battery died out on longer calls, I would switch it with the right version. With the AirPods 2, I really haven't had to do that because the three hour of battery life is plenty for most phone calls that you'd ever wanna be on. If the phone call is going over three hours and you're getting the dead signal on your AirPods, maybe it's time to end that call. The H1 chip also adds some more benefits to AirPods 2, including faster switching time between devices, which I found really, really convenient when switching between my iPhone and my Apple Watch, and especially between my iPhone and my iPad. That's generally where I use my AirPods the most. 
and I've even used it on the Mac, although I still feel like the Mac connection time is a little bit slower than the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch. The H1 chip also promises to bring in lower latency, especially into applications like gaming. I really didn't notice too much of a difference here between the latency of AirPods 1 and the latency of AirPods 2. I generally found that AirPods 1, I never really noticed any latency on games or on video. And I gotta say that it feels the same for AirPods 2, which is good. I don't think it really has any latency issues, but for me, it's just not a benefit that I really recognized when using them. So overall, AirPods 2 is just the first generation of AirPods with some extra bells and whistles, some more convenient features thrown into the mix. It's not a revolution of AirPods themselves. If this was an iPhone upgrade, we would be calling these the AirPods S. So, should you buy them? And I really think that comes down to a different couple categories of people who are in the market for these new AirPods. Number one, if you're a first time owner and you've never owned a pair of AirPods and you're very interested in getting a pair, now is the time to buy. They just released the brand new generation. You're getting some added features like Hey S Word support. You're getting longer battery life with longer talk time. And you're also getting some added benefits of the H1 chip and also other additional features like wireless charging if you want your AirPods to wirelessly charge. So if you want great wireless earbuds, if you're already in the Apple ecosystem and you've been looking at AirPods for a while, now is a great time to buy. They're still an amazing product and you should definitely purchase them. Now, what if you already own the first generation of AirPods? Should you upgrade to AirPods 2? And I really think this comes down to two factors. Number one being, did you buy AirPods when they first launched? Because if you did, you probably have a pair of AirPods that don't have the best battery life currently. I know on my AirPods, by the end of their life cycle, they were maybe getting 30 minutes to an hour of playback time, and that's because I use them almost every day, and I degraded their battery life so much that they could hardly keep a charge. So if you have a pair of AirPods like that that have really, really bad battery life, then yeah, I think now is a great time to just go ahead, upgrade to AirPods 2, knowing in two to three years that you're probably going to have to replace them again because they have a limited battery life that unfortunately you cannot replace. However, if you just got a pair of AirPods for Christmas or not too long ago, or even if you have a pair of older AirPods and the battery life on them is still working just fine, I wouldn't recommend upgrading to AirPods 2 because you're eventually going to have to upgrade your AirPods when that battery life does die down, and I don't think there's enough new features to warrant upgrading. If you already have AirPods that are working and in good condition, the reasons to upgrade aren't there. And if you do have AirPods 1 and you want that wireless charging case, that's also something I would skip. I really don't see the value in getting that at $80. At that point, I would just save your money wait for your AirPods to degrade, and then just upgrade fully to a new pair of AirPods with the wireless charging case included. All right, everyone, and that's gonna do it for the AirPods review. Let me know what you think of AirPods 2 in the comments below. Do you guys like them? Do you like the new features? Do you plan on purchasing a set if you've never owned a pair of AirPods? Or do you plan on upgrading if you own AirPods 1? If you wanna help the channel out anyway, make sure you check out the links in the description, including an affiliate link to purchase AirPods. If you use that affiliate link, you will help out the channel. If you like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.